Today, Swarf and Chips is taking place here at High Spec Engineering in Market Overton, and it's all about this component. Now, this part used to be made in three operations here, and it used to take around about an hour in production time. Today, they're doing it in less than half of that time as a result of the automation that's been implemented here by RoboJob. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how this part used to be made, how it's made now, and some of the problems that have been encountered and solved along the way. Now to start with, how was it made? Well, this machine here used to do two of the three operations. The part was placed into the chuck, and this diameter was turned, the component was turned over, the second diameter was turned, the internals were bored, drilled, and threaded and that was the first two operations. The total cycle time was around about 20 minutes. So we now move on to the third operation. Now don't forget with Swarf and Chips, we are always encouraging you to comment uh, on our videos. Have you had uh, incidents where you've improved the productivity of a component as a result of changing the way you do things? Now this all important third operation here was the milling of these flats and that was done here on this Herco VM30i. And you've got, in fact, here, you've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got six flats on this component that were all machined. And in fact, the cycle time here on the milling side was around about or just under 10 minutes. We, we found that trying to do three ops on three different machines, uh, get the scheduling correct so that as they were coming off the first machine, they were going on to the second without having any time delay or lag between them, probably the biggest challenge. Um, the additional handling, the potential for damaging the parts is also a consideration. So there's a lot of thought that goes into solving problems when manufacturing parts like this, but why was RoboJob from Hydrofeed selected? We looked into automation for a start, we wanted to uh, get this part done in one uh, along with many other parts. So once we decided on the machine tool, we found the robo job set up, uh, put the two together, and it's a great solution. Had a few tweaks to make to how we produce the part, but it's now doing the job fantastically well. So how does this part now get made in one hit? The robo job loads a billet into the main spindle, then they rough and finish turn the front end of the component. The part is then turned around thanks to the robo jobs automation and turnover station loaded back into the main spindle where they rough turn, finish turn, mill the flats and then thread and finish the component. Then the part is taken out of the machine by the robo job and put back in the stacker as a finished part, all made in one hit. The biggest problem with automation in our eyes is swarf. Uh, so before we used to you drill the hole and bore it out but we found that the amount of swarf being generated could get stuck in the chuck. As the tip wore, it would become stringy and get wrapped around the jaws. So we went to use two U-drills, so minimum boring out. Um, screw cutting the internal thread was also a challenge because of the swarf again. So after numerous different trial and errors, uh, we, we settled on thread milling. We've also noticed that we don't have to worry too much about cycle time. We're not pinning it down to seconds because the automation keeps the machine running at a very good uh, productivity level. A few seconds on cycle time is counteracted by the losses that we would have had through breaks and just general fatigue through the day. Uh, the RoboJob unit utilises um, the best industrial brands. So we use Fanuc for the robotics, we use SICK for the light curtains and the sensors. We use all industrial motors within the system itself. So they're long lasting, the best that you can buy in the industry. Year to date, there's over 800 installations uh, and each week there's more than two or three going in around the world 
uh, every week. So uh, teething issues have all been ironed out. There, it's a very slick, smooth process, especially when it comes to the, the software. It's massively important for the robot to be reliable. Um, it wouldn't be doing its job if it didn't. Uh, so fundamentally, if it, it didn't run all day and all night, then we are, are, are not supplying a product which is fit for purpose effectively. Now, uh, Fanuc give us some stats and statistics that say um, it gives a 99.9% .9 upkeep for 15 years. And that's in the automotive environment. Whereas we're using it as per your cycle time. So the true life of the robots are, are, are fantastic. It uh, should, out, should outlive the CNC. We think the return on investment for this uh, robot installation will be around two to two and a half years. And that's without running overnight. As a result of the automation, we now look at every part that comes in uh, with a fresh pair of eyes. We're looking to see what we can do to run it through our automation systems, uh, better ways of producing, quicker ways of producing, and cutting down, handling, uh, and invariably the amount of time it takes to do a job. And on Swarf and Chips, we try and encounter every obstacle and hurdle that we can possibly think of and then overcome it. And one that I was interested in was the programming. OK, a great piece of hardware. I can see the productivity gains, but how long is it going to take me to program a part like this? So I just want to show how quick and easy it is to set up a component on the Millisys software. So on the screen, you tell, um, you tell the software the size of your billet. So at the moment you can see we've got 76.3 by 25 by 25. So here's my uh, raw billet. You can see it's actually 76 by 25 by 25. So once you've entered that detail into the software, it tells you on the system of where to place the uh, raw billets. Once you've done that, you simply go over to your automate page. It gives you the layout of how many parts you're gonna get on the table. Go to your next position and press start. The robot will therefore pick up the first billet and load it into the machine. And that's how easy it is to program the Millisys software. So the robots come in various payloads. Um, we use all uh, the industrial sizes. So the, the, starting, uh, the starting payload is 12 kilo. The increments go 12, 20, 35, 50, 70. And the biggest we've done so far in the UK is 165 kilo. We're finding some um, great increases in, in uh, inquiries in automation in the UK in particular um, with uh, brand new machines and existing retrofit installations. So the journey we've just been on uh, has demonstrated how automation can impact a factory. We've solved, or I should say high spec, have solved a problem and improved productivity. And in fact, it was so good that they bought a second unit here you'll see behind us, which is actually attached and configured to a Herco five axis machining center. Production has gone through the roof here at High Spec Engineering. Automation has made this business much more efficient. Now automation and production gains aren't the only feather in the company's cap. They also manufacture guitars. So to play us out, here is screaming Darren Swarf and Mad Dog Chips.
that's it for this week's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you've solved a problem or a puzzle like these guys have here at High Spec Engineering, let us know and we can visit uh, your factory and film a show there. But don't forget, as we always say, uh, keep those spindles turning.